Welcome back guys. Now I'm going to uh, discuss to you the ball connection from beam to column using British standard uh, 5950 or B is 5950. Okay, so let us start. Okay, so uh, ball connection using B is 5950. Uh, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge my the source of, of this discussion. I'm using the book of uh, uh, Chanakya Arya and the third edition, the design of structural elements by which uh, is using the uh, BEC standard. Okay, so in the design of the ball connection, there are just a few things that I'd like you to, to take note. For example, here you have the diameter of the hole. We consider the diameter of the bolt plus one. So the diameter of the bolt is at 12, and you just add one millimeter and so on. So you have here this one and this one. Okay, you just have to read this one, you can pause this one, and then you can and just read this one. I think this one will be helpful, especially to those who are still uh, uh, studying uh, and using these standards. Now, in uh, to start, you have to consider these uh, uh, recommendations from this clause. Uh, you have 2.5 bar diameter, should be le less than or equal to the pitch, and then or the pitch is greater than or equal to 2.5 bar diameter and less than or equal to 14 P. So if you have the bar diameter plus that uh, one millimeter allowance, that is I, you have DH, and then you have the H distance by which you have here this uh, uh, consideration, recommendation that you should have to consider minimum H distance E1 and then E2. You have here E1 here and then E1, E1, and then you have E2. Okay, and then you shall have also this sheared or hand frame cut edge that you should consider. It should be greater than 1.4 dH or diameter of the hole. And then the other thing that you have to consider is this one, okay? E, E1 or the e, uh, H1 equal to le or less than or equal to 11 thickness. And then this uh, variable, which is equivalent to this formula. In other words, if you have uh, your uh, strength of your steel equal to 275, then this one will autom automatically will become two equals to one. Okay, so for ordinary bolts, you have your, the, the, the most common that you are going to check in the bolt connection is the, uh, the failure in shear and then bit bearing. So for shear capacity with the bolt, you have just, just have the area of the, uh, the PS and then and then AES, by which PS is the shear strength of the bolt, and then the area of the uh, subjected to that uh, bolt or AES. And then for bearing capacity, you also have here, okay, for bearing capacity, you have here the diameter of the bolt. Of course, if you're going to consider this one, this is the bearing capacity, this is the area, which is just corresponds to the diameter of the bolt, and then the thickness of the plate. Okay, that's the area, and then you have the bearing stress okay, of the bolt. Of course, uh, uh, we would like to compute, to compute the, the, the bolt, the bearing capacity of the bolt. So the bearing capacity of the connected part, let us say the plate, so you also have this formula by which you just have consider these values, okay? These values are this corresponding uh, notation, PBS, bearing strength of the connected part, let us say that's the beam, or the universal beam or universal column, you have E, the age, the end distance, which I've shown earlier, and then the effective area of the bolts in shear, okay, normally taken, given 4.22, the thickness of the connected part, this is a connected part, okay? Could be a beam or the or a column, you see, universal, universal column or universal bolt. And then you have KBS from here, okay? This is equal to 1.0 for bolts in standard clearance holes. Uh, okay, so these are the com common uh, failures. First, this one is a uh, single shear failure, meaning there's only one area being considered in a single shear. Okay, and for uh, bearing failure of bolts, you can see there, there is a, a failure on the bearing stress that is be bearing that is uh, going to be generated uh, on the bolt, the bolt itself. That's why the area here of the bolt is simply is simply equal to okay the area for the bolt 
subjected for that stress is just equal to the diameter times okay the thickness of the plate and then you have here number three is the bearing failure of the cleat or let's say it's an angle bar or a plate the thickness of the, uh, this particular side okay if you are going to look at it from the bottom it could possibly also this one okay this is the diameter of the bolt and then also the thickness but this one will be considered maybe going straight here to the particular area of the plate okay. so it's, now uh, some of uh, the shear strength uh, values first 4.19 which we can get it from table 30 of the bs 5950 we have the corresponding bolt grade let's say 4.6 8.8 .8, 10.9 and so on so this corresponding uh, bolt grade you have this shear strength for the bolt okay that we have to use now for the bearing strength of the bolt you just have to use these corresponding values as well if you are using this bolt grade and then and then there's also the bearing strength of the connecting parts which is the it could be a uc or a ub depending on the steel grade it, it's 275 that is 460 355 550 and so on okay then the tensile stress area Okay, stress area, which we say, or in reinforced concrete, is just the area of the the circle, uh, circular section. Here, there's corresponding, uh, because of the three, of course, the corresponding area. For example, for the 12 millimeter bolt, you have 84.3, 16, 157, and so on. Now, the shear capacity of the bolts in a double shear. Since you have a double shear, you have two areas uh, back to back, so you have to multiply it by two. Okay. Now, in tension, you have uh, here, the nominal tension capacity is 0.8 PT. PT is given to be tension uh, strength for the bolt, and then which is given in 4.23. I will show you later. And then the 80 is the tensile uh, stress area of the bolt given in this uh, table 4.22. Then the tensile capacity of the flat plate is given by this PT, okay, this uh, symbol, and then VY, and so on. Just have to check with this one, okay. Now, uh, this is what I was saying about the double shear failure. Since uh, if you have double shear failure, you have to bl blow up this, this section, you have your two areas, okay? Two areas, that's why you have times two of the area, okay? Times two of the area. Okay. And then you have here the typical of bolts and tension, let us say here. Uh, this is the two plates. So there is a bolt here. So this one is, for example, this one single shear failure. And this one's the failure in the cover plate of the tension. So the same here. There's a corresponding calculation of the net area, which uh, we're not very particular in this uh, video tutorial. Tensile strength for the bolts, which I have already mentioned earlier, okay, uh, from table 34, 34. So these are the corresponding, corresponding tensile strength for the bolts. And then for a combined shear and um, combination, uh, combined stress, let's say the shear and tension, we are going to consider this uh, combination by which it has to be less than or equal to 1.4. Okay, so let us uh, go straight to example. So we have here a double angle web, web should say. If you're, if you're going to look at this, okay, this side, you can see this section, okay? So let's say at A, this one is at A. So you can look at the section, meaning there are two plates or angle bar, let's say, that connects between this, this is the beam, okay? And then connects to this one is the column. So this is, this one is the UB, okay? This is the UB, okay? And then this, 356 uh, by 366 by 177 is the UC. Okay, so this one is the UC or the universal column, and this one is the universal beam. So, how we are, it's going, it's being connected. There are three M20 and this side, and also the opposite side has also three M20. This is the one, two, three, and there are also other three at the other side. And there are six bolts connect, connecting to the beam. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have here this six bolt, okay? 
we have 6M20 connecting from the cleat, cleat to the beam, and then three in this side to the column, and then also another three from here. Also, these are the, uh, the given. We have uh, the shear, 400. Of course, the beam will be acting through here in this uh, thing. The weight coming from the beam, which is this one, 400 kilonewton. Okay, this one. I'll be acting towards these uh, uh, these bolts, these six bolts. Okay, and these are the edges uh, distances, 50, 50 here, and then here you also have 40, and then from the column part you have 60. Okay, so you have your diameter of the bolt, diameter of the bolt hole plus two, pitch of the bolt 140 and 60. Why 140? Here connection from the cleat to the column you have 140 and connection from the the cleat to this to this beam is 60h okay 60 60 so these are the pitch or spacing edge distances you have e1 is 40 versus 40 this one is 40 okay this is 40 and you have your uh, for e2 you have 60 and uh, 50 you have your 60 and then 50 Okay, the thickness of the plate, as you can see here. Okay, okay, this one. Okay. The thickness, the angle cleat is 90 by 90 by 10 millimeter. In other words, you have this like, like this, okay? This is 90, this is 90, and the thickness is 10, 10, okay? So just have to consider this uh, recommendation from, the, from this clause, which I discussed earlier. P should be greater than 2.5 dB less than or equal to 14 T. Actually, this is the one, okay? How it's being calculated, it's coming from here, okay? 2.5, you have this one, 2.5 and 20 is 50. Okay, 140 and 160 is greater than 2.5. So it satisfies the condition, okay? And then here for 14 T, 14 T is 140, which is less than, okay? I uh, should say, okay? 140 and 60 is less this one 140 and 60 is less than 140 or 14 t this one satisfies this condition and then you have also this pitch e1 and e2 should be greater than 1.25 dh this is 1.25 dh this is 30.8 coming from here i just from the calculation of that book i just made here the that recommendation exactly coming from number one this is number one number two and then this one is number three which is here number three it's all coming from here if you satisfy this if you satisfy if you satisfy this uh, condition then you can proceed otherwise you'll go for another uh, method or solution that you can use from the bs standard okay so first uh we check this as i said this there are uh, three failures that you have to check the shear uh, strength of the bolt and the be and the bearing strength capacity of the bolt and then that uh, tension of the, the cleat or on the connecting parts so you have here from table 4.22 we have here the shear strength which is equal to 375 okay 375 and the area of that bolt which we get also okay uh, from there is uh, 245 so we have here 91.9 kilonewton. Now, the total, uh, the shear capacity of the bolt group, so you have six piece. Okay. Each bolt has 91.9. If you have the total of six, you have 551.4, meaning it's greater than the uh, applied load, 400 kilonewton, meaning it's safe, okay? Take note, this is the bolts connecting cleat to the column. So this is this part, okay? This is this part, this one. Now, for the bearing, the thickness of the, the bearing, if you're going to cut this one, you have this, okay, part. This is the diameter of the bolt, and this one is the thickness, okay? Thickness of the click, which is 10. You have 20, 10, and 1,000. Actually, it's here, this 1,000 for less than, uh, for M20, Okay, for M20, we have this below, so we can use 1,000. So we have 
the capacity is 200 kilonewton, bearing capacity of the bolt in, 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 in bearing. So since the thickness is uh, the angle plate is 10 millimeter less than the thickness of the column flange, so the bearing in the cleat is critical. So we can have we got, we have we can uh, compute the bearing capacity of the cleat using this uh, condition as using this formula, and uh, considering this condition that this one, this value, okay, should be less than this value, which I have already presented to you earlier, the first uh, uh, slides. So you have here one is our K diameter of the bolt is 20 thickness of the plate is uh, 10 and then the bearing capacities or stress is 460 so you have this 192 correspondingly you have also 0.5 k is 1 e the which is 60 okay take note this is a connection from the plate or the clay to the column okay you have 10 the thickness of the clay and then 460 which is uh for that of the uh plate okay yeah the connecting parts this one is 460 okay so this is just a to show the the, the information that uh, where do we get these values see i was saying 460 from the connecting part so since we are using 275 so we use the bearing strength of the connecting part which is the uc or the column so we use this one 460. I discussed this already earlier on this slide. I'm just presenting to you where do we get those values. Okay, from this ta table 4.21, table 4.19, which is from table 30, please 5950. It's very clear here where uh, from the author it shows exactly where did he got the, the table from uh, correspond uh, from the BES 5950. Okay, and then you have here the to check the strength of the bolt group connecting now to the beam. So if you can see here, if you have uh, our load, which is uh, the shears, the shear load, which is uh, 400 kilonewton coming from the beam, which, which is actually is the governing load that would uh, that would be acting on these bolts, okay, connecting to the universal beam. Okay. So if you have, you know, the stress, if you, okay, of this general formula that m is equal to s okay and general formula in uh, strength of uh, materials you can check it from there moment of course we have 400 multi multiplied by 50 which is the eccentricity we can get 20 kilonewton meter so we have this one How about z z is just equal to the moment of inertia over the distance to the centroidal axis of course we are going to take consideration here the book the bolt which is most uh, stressed. This part is the most stressed. Of course, the neutral axis is coming from here. This is a simple uh, uh, rectangular section, I should say, by which you can get 150 as the distance okay, from this <coughs> most or critical, uh, the most stressed uh, bolt from here, give us 150. So we can have Z equals to this one. And then, how about the moment of inertia? We have this formula uh, that A, the area, multiplied by its distance to the neutral axis squared will give us the moment of inertia times the because, for example, here, first bolt distance going here, if you have 60, it's 30. Okay, so that's why you have 30 squared. And then second bolt, second bolt, this is first, this one is second bolt. 60 and then 30 you have here a total of 90 okay 90 squared and then 150 as i already mentioned earlier times two because you have here three balls here and then another here so just multiply it by two okay so we can get the moment of inertia in terms of a and then what is this the load of the outermost bolt due to the shear okay so the total is 600 is 400 since there are six so we can just divide this 400 by 6, then we can have this uh, shear that would be acting on the bolt due to the load, the shear load of 400 kilonewton. So each bolt has a corresponding of 66.7 kilonewton. Now the resultant shear for shear for bolt would give us the shear that is uh, due to the 
ano uh, the yeah the shear due to the actual uh, the, the, the applied shear and then due to the moment which is equal to 47.6 from this formula okay we substitute moment which which we already calculated earlier 20 kN meter or 20 times 10 to the power of 3 to make it what 20 kN millimeter in terms of millimeter and then you have 420a in millimeter squared so we can get here in terms of kN substitute it here in other words if we have this uh, bolt this part let us say this one is number three at number three so we have here okay you have here due to okay the due to the applied load of uh, 66.7 from the 400 kilonewton and then the other one if we are going to rotate from here there's also uh, here okay which is due to the moment okay by which we have 47.6 okay so this is 47.6 and then this one is 66.7 kilonewton so we can have here a resultant resultant chair acting on the bolt which is equal to 80 kilonewton so this is now uh the, the uh, they, they applied the uh, shear acting on the bolt way which we are going to compute uh, we check later okay so we have a uh, since that applied load 80 to kN is less than 2 ps what is this 2 ps earlier we have calculated each bolt is equal to 91 uh, 91.9 this is the one okay okay for the shear each bolt is 91.9 and since it's a uh, uh, times 2 because you have two uh it's double shear i should say it's double shear so that's why we multiply it by two okay so it's safe it's adequate okay now uh just to show you how do we give the calculation so i made here some uh for you to trace for you to trace how do we get 63,000? how do we get this 428 it's coming from here how do we get 47.6 it's coming from here and just to show you further but uh anyway i've already discussed this so they are here okay and then you have here uh the bearing take note that we were uh discussing the this uh we we're checking the bolt connection from clicks to the web or the supporting web of the supporting beam so we have here to check also this for bearing okay that this one should also be greater than the bearing the capacity of the plate should also be uh, greater than no, i should say the capacity of the bolt should also be greater than this uh, fs which we calculated earlier 82 kN newton here we say it's 200 above fs how do we get 200 we have this formula the bolt diameter and then you have the thickness of the plate and then this uh, allowable bearing stress 1000 which we already presented to you earlier okay, in the table so we have 200 kN it's greater greater than the applied uh, applied uh, load shear load resultant shear load on the bolt okay so we have this one is safe for the bearing of the bolt now for the clip or the we say uh, we say it as angle bar it's 92 kN newton and since it's uh, both sides, it, sh it should be 184. It's 92 times 2. It's greater than Fs, Fs, which is equal to 82. How do we calculate 92? It's coming from here. Okay. The same uh, calculation that we did in the first uh, calculation that we had in checking the bearing capacity of the bolt itself. When we are doing the calculation in co uh, with the connection of uh, the clip to the column. So the same calculation, we had 92. So it's safe also. Now the bearing capacity of the web, okay, the web of the universal beam. So we have here K20, and this one is get is 97.57, which is also greater than Fs, which we computed to be equal to 82. So the connection between the bolt, uh, between the cleat and the beam, uh, checking the failure for the share sharing of the shear stress of the bolt, shear stress of the cleat, and then the the bearing uh, capacity of the web 
are all safe. Now, the shear strength of the cleats, okay, we check, which is, which is the cleat, this one is, this is the cleat, and then it's the cleat. You have your, this calculation, in the first uh, slide, we presented this uh, formula, 0.6, uh, the shear strength is 275, and the AV is 3,600 coming from here. How do we calculate this one? Thickness of the cleat, which is 10, and then the length of the cleat, which is 400, this one, so is 400, so meaning uh, this is the cleat, cleat, okay, okay. Uh, just like the angle bar. This is the universal, uh, this is the universal beam. This one, the thickness of this one is uh, 10, length is 40, 40 times, uh, 400, I should say, 400 times 10 is uh, 4,000 times 0 0.9 becomes 3,600. So we have this PV equal to 594, okay, using this formula. Now this 594, Okay, it's greater than the applied load, which is 200. Where do we get this 200? The total load, the total applied lo load here is 400, meaning 200 in this cleat. Okay, so here, if this is 400, so applied here is, this one is 200, also the other, other side of the cleat is also 200. Okay, so the shear capacity of the single cleat is 594 greater than the applied uh, shear load on the cleat, which is 200. So the angle uh, or the cleat is adequate in shear. It is safe. It will not fail. Okay. Now, the bending strength of the cleats. Okay. There's bending here because of the 400 kilonewton. There will be an overturning at a distance of 50 millimeter. So from here, the moment we apply only 400 over 2, as I said, 200 here and then 200 on the other side. We just consider one clip and then that goes on applicable to another clip as well. So 400 divided 2 and then 50 millimeters this distance, okay, from here, okay, to here, or here to here is 50, okay, A millimeter convert to meter times 10 to the negative 3, then you have 10 kilonewton meter. Then the moment capacity of one angle clip is just, this one is from very familiar, uh, this formula is very familiar. Okay, the, we say if Y or the yield stress of the strength of the steel, structural steel, which is 275, and then you have Z, uh, 266.67. How do we get this one? Of course here, Z, Z is just the moment of inertia. If you have the rectangular section, the moment of inertia is just B, D cube over 12. In this case, D is the thickness, and then B is the, what, the height. So height is 400 of the clip, thickness is 10, then you have uh, a Z, I should say, a plastic. This one is for elastic. Plastic is six, okay, and so Z is for plastic. So we have this value. So you can say that uh, the bending strength of the cleat, which is 73.3, is greater than the M, which is 10 kilonewton meter, and it is safe. And then the local shear, so, the local shear strength, the, the beam or the beam itself, okay, or the UB, okay, okay, the UB, sorry. So you have here 275, okay, so you have here PY, it's already given to be 275, uh, okay. Then you have the AV from, from here, it's just the thickness of the web and then the depth. How do we get this one? 602. Take note that our specification for the beam is 610 by 229 by 101. Watch this one. 610, 229 by 101. 602 is our D and then 10.6 is our thickness of the web. So thickness of the web is 10.6. The effective depth is 602.2. So the area of that web is equal to this one, all okay. right? So substitute here, AV, okay, we have 275 megapascal, all okay, right, then we can compute in terms of kilonewton, it was to 1053.2, sufficient enough to resist the load of shear, shear load, it was to 400 kilonewton. All okay, right, so I think uh, that's all for the bolt connection. If you have some uh, clarifications, you may, you may just drop your question in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe and like my channel. Thank you.